And we are live. Welcome back to another edition of the Sunday Scaries. We're on a hiatus. These things happen. We're here now. As always, it's your favorite host, favorite host, a great one. Yeah, that's The Rock. Uh, I'm joined by the doctor, as always. How you doing? Full recap weekend, huh? A lot of sports, a lot mm -hmm. of fun things to talk about. We got XFL wrap up. We got a little NBA talk, almost playoff time. Got some uh, college basketball championships for men's and women's coming up. Uh, women's was today, men's is tomorrow. Uh, we got some uh, random random things we saw in sports. The funniest ha ha's of April Fools. And uh, I don't know what else you want to go with. I mean, that's so many bases, we might as well get going on the first one. Obviously, we're going to do baseball opening weekend. No, oh, yeah. Obviously. Let's Speaking not. Speaking of bases. Yeah. All right. Well, let's just, let's just get into it. First beef. Why, why does the XFL uh, play on every day of the week? And I never know when they're going to play. It seems like a very odd spread to make the games anywhere from Thursday to Monday night. I'm just waiting for an accidental Tuesday. Yeah, and we never really know what's going on. Um, it's very annoying. I'm thinking it's got to be Saturdays and Sundays. It, In an eight-team league, why not? Yeah, I. It's it's getting aggressively harder, and they're testing my patience in tracking this league, especially when you're like, "Here's our game of the day," and it is whatever it was, like the Brahmas playing the Vipers. It's like these might arguably be the two worst teams. I do not care. I do not care. So Friday we had. The team, and as I've always said, my favorite team, the Sea Dragons playing. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, okay. I've yeah. always said this to be true. It's true. You've been known to love the Seattle Sea Dragons. They got to play the Houston Renegades. Okay. Arlington. Arlington, Houston Roughnecks, who I've also said is my favorite team. They are the best. People have said this. Thank God. Um, this game was. Almost exactly how you thought it would go. The Dragons are on a big win streak. They have won five in a row for starting 0-2. Um, what's changed? They just have a better lead in the final two minutes so they don't blow it. Um, ben DiNucci throws arguably one of the – just one or two just unbelievably bad interceptions a game. He only had one today, Friday, but – I didn't know. I was waiting for him to blame somebody since last time he tried to blame Josh Gordon for his ineptitude. So, a win's a win. He played fine. Big story was Josh Gordon is back on the field. Yeah, and finally got a catch and a tutty. Um, you can't have a weapon like that and not utilize him. So, the fact that he went two games in a row with no catches um, – Bad news. So, yeah, uh, good to see him catching again. Danucci's got to figure out how to stop throwing a interception in the red zone and or end zone. Every game. And um, it's scary, but when you have the best offense in the league, I guess you can afford those mistakes. I don't think – well, I guess it depends on how you standardize offense because they certainly don't score the most points per game. Sure, sure. Um, they probably do have the most yards per game because they just go – 80 yards and then give it up half the time. Yeah. yeah, before this game, and it could still be true, they led the league in receiving and in rushing. Um, so I guess you could argue that's the best offense, but you're right, probably not the best scoring. Um, DC puts up silly numbers, but DC's defense is very good. And DC also lost to a 0 and 6 team, which is also fun. So good. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, the Dragons are good. Um, that North Division looks crazy uh, now that we are past the halfway point of the season. Um, Three games left. Yeah, gee whiz. It's kind of flying by. What Do you remember how the um, playoffs work in this? Is it top two from each division or best four overall? 
I want to say it's the top spots, so yeah. the leaders of the division, uh, and then the mm -hmm. two best records after that. Okay. That's how I remember. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So there's a chance Seattle still gets in. Pretty good chance. But that North division is significantly better than the South. Yeah, I think Houston's on a skid, too, so that might be a problem. Maybe they'll pick it back up. But, right. yes, the North Division looks good. Um, you got the defenders, too, who who have been a, regrettably the best team in the league. A pain. Yeah. So they're the best for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. We need to make sure that we make an effort to tell that super fan that he is wrong. Uh, yeah. Shout out to that guy whose name we can't even I remember. I never remember it, and this is on me. <laughs> we always say we'll, we'll try to look it up and remember beforehand, but um, Rick did again. Just totally forgot. He's garbage. We'll try to get him on, though. It'd be funny to talk to him. It would be really funny. Um, he probably – we'd be like, hey, you want to come and do a jet? He'd be like, oh, well, maybe. He'd go look at one thing and be like, these guys fucking hate me. <laughs> They're always talking smack. But it's for fun. And we have to hate the defenders by default. By default, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, all I know is that, uh, you know, Dragons did some things and, and they came out with a dub, which was great. Yeah. This is a non-starter, non-starter game. The second game of the weekend on a Saturday, and again, must reiterate, did not know this game was going on. Oh, you want me to clean up the score? Yeah, rip them. All right. The Seattle see we still got it dragons oh baby twenty four and the Arlington uh, uh I don't even know what to say Renegades worst team in the XFL that is in Texas fifteen oh, there you go <laughs> the Arlington hand grenades went off in my pants oh. the Arlington duck fest. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the Arlington Bob Hoops. That one's pretty good, actually. That's, yep, That's actually Hoops not that bad. Bob Hoops is, is garbage. <laughs> These things don't eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll never forget the very first week we watched, and Pat goes, <laughs> it looks like a college football coach. And we're like, is he doing like a bit here? I can't, I don't know if Classic. he's I don't know if he's like pretending to not know who he is. He goes, his mannerism, just how he is. This guy had to have coached college football. Like, okay, he knows who he is. No, nope, he had no idea who Bob Stoops was. Classic. <laughs> I mean, he knew who he was. He didn't know what he looked like, I guess. So that was very funny. Um, San Antonio versus Vegas. Um, boy, this game. Heinz Ward did not give them enough snacks at halftime. Mm. No orange slices. To, no Capri Suns. That's he probably was. forgot the Capri Suns. Oh, man. Everybody was just drinking water on the, know. the snack time. I don't know what. Because they came out in the second half and scored zero points. <laughs> That's. The score was 19 to 12 at halftime. Like, oh, we're doing like an XFL game. And then. They didn't score again. Oh, man. To be fair, the Vipers only got a seven more. So, I mean, what an electric second half. Couldn't have gone better for either team, I think. Um, San Antonio did play their new quarterback. Yes, Kirk Benkert, who jumped around a million different NFL practice squads. Last known sighting? Uh, I think it was San Fran. A Packer, I think. Oh, either yeah, Packers or San Fran. Why not? Yeah, but he, you're right. He was, he was all over the place playing practice guy. So that's cool for him <laughs> to go play for the San Antonio Rocks. Um, I don't know what else to say about this. I there was the first ever XFL trade. Oh, yes. Was it, it involved the Brahmas, right? No. No, the Vipers. The Vipers, I yeah. think. We did like a quarterback trade for a linebacker or something. And it was straight up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're giving up picks. Yeah, I don't know. What else? What other capital could you have besides just players? <laughs> I don't know. 
Yeah, uh, for Vegas, you could say you can own a percentage of a casino. Which one? The one they set up in their backyard? Like It's actually in Reno. <laughs> <laughs> Not in Vegas. But that's cool, I guess. I didn't know if that was allowed, but um, now I have some trade suggestions. Mm. Um, the Sea Dragon should trade Ben DiNucci for, and again, this is much like uh, Semi-Pro, um, like a working vending machine for the locker room. Okay, um, I like it. The Brahma should trade uh, their coach, Antonio Heinz Ward. I don't. I don't know why I would want to call him that. It's Antonio. Holmes. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. All That's right. who they should trade for. <laughs> yeah. Do that. Steeler for Steeler. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Trade accepted. Uh, and and there are a few members within the XFL that are heavily recruiting Cam Newton into the league just to play a few games for fun. Mm. Uh, my thoughts on that are yes, do it. Can you imagine how good he would be in the XFL? Yeah, if that shoulder situation or arm or whatever is cleared up, then that might be pretty fun. Dude, fuck passing. Just run it all the time. They can't tackle anybody in this league. Yeah, and D that's all DC does is play running quarterback. Yeah, so. so he would be like both of their quarterbacks combined times 10. Mm. Imagine, imagine the threat of him running, but actually he's better at passing. That's, that would be fun. He would kill them. So that would be cool. Um, I think the Vipers might have won two in a row. Good for them. Mm, that seems right to me. So I'm just going to say that's true. <laughs> I like it. I like it. That's a good narrative, and we should run with it. Vipers are heating up. Mm -hmm. Want that soundboard of the NBA Jam guy? That would be good. Get it figured out. That would be sick. The... Brahmas have got to just. We need some fire. There's got to be some fire somewhere. The unfortunate thing about that team, though, is that's the Rocks team, regardless of if there's not supposed to be any favorites or whatever. That's yeah. the Rocks team. So yeah. they could probably goof up a bunch, and he's not going to do it. True. Anything to save the image. If he fires Heinz Ward, oh, Rock's the bad guy, and Rock can't be the bad guy. Oh, you, we should do that tangent, too, because that's so funny to me. Uh, the Rock versus Tim Gunn. Yes. That's that's him, right, Tim? James Gunn? James Gunn. James Gunn. Okay. I don't know who Tim Gunn is. That sounds like a name that is also tied to movies. Um, Tim Burton. <laughs> close enough. Yes, so... Um, Hot off the, the rumor mill, um, Rock does not like the actor that plays Shazam. And in the new Shazam movie, um, Rock was supposed to make a cameo as Black Adam. Or, or um, it, it was requested that he show up. And he said no. He just told him to, like, eat a bag of dicks. Yeah, so he was not to, even nice about it. They had to rewrite the script for the end and all this different stuff. And and this even goes back to the Rock making them do Black Adam, where he was like ultimately cool in the end. It it's just a really bad look when you put your personal image over a story, and somehow he owns the rights, some right to Black Adam. Yes, so that's that was the second part. Thank you for reminding yeah. me. The second part was, okay, if you're not going to show up, we're going to CG. It's only going to be 15 seconds, but we're going to CGI Black Adam into it. He's just going to show up, you know, like fly in, whatever. And Rock was like, no, fuck you guys. You can't use my image. So um, so we need to fire him and just make a new Black Adam. He's being a little bit of a prissy. Uh, not a good look. You know who would never do this? Stone Cold. Ooh, Stone, Stone Cold is Black Adam. <laughs> <laughs> At first, I was like, "Oh, that might be problematic." That <laughs> that might be problematic. <laughs> almost, that almost worked. They're all bald, if you know. You can't have hair to be black Adam, so 
People won't know this. No, it's cool. Wrestling guy, interchangeable, right? Why not? Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually like a bad guy, so that that makes a lot of sense. And I think he's actually like sixty five now. <laughs> he is. I think he's pretty old. Dirt old. Yeah. I I hope his shoulder just like hurts every day of his life. Gosh, we gotta check up on that next week. We'll we'll Goldberg give you. If you a Goldberg. Okay. Where in the world is Goldberg? I like that. Put that in the notebook. <laughs> Scribble it down. Uh, all right. Let's go on to the game that maybe was probably most surprising. For sure most surprising. And we'll wrap this one up. There you go. The, the Vegas, there's a snake in my boot. 26. Versus the San Antonio Rocks. 12. Not great. Heinz Ward, remember the juice boxes next time, man. Couldn't, couldn't agree more, boo. <laughs> also, maybe threaten some of your players with, like, not playing when they suck. Yeah. Thoughts? You don't have to use them, but they're free. <laughs> uh, until you use them, then we're going to... I'm going to come for that ass. <laughs> DC... The D.C. Donkeys playing the Orlando. You know what? This sucks on, like, a lot of. It's, like, good and bad. I liked when they were the Orlando guarding the O for record. That was very fun for me. But I also like the D.C. loss. We could say guarding the worst league or yeah. worst record in the Guarding the basement. Yeah. Yeah. Kickers did some work in this one. For the negative and the positive. But this was definitely, I think, maybe... This might have been top three XFL games of the year. Just competitively speaking and uh, for how fun it was. All the Guardians won, I have no idea. Just no idea. They were... Down at half. They had a great third quarter. That, that was the only quarter they won was the third quarter. And it was enough. Their defense probably did just enough. I don't know, because, I mean, the Guardians ran for a metric shit ton of yards. Passed it forever. I'm mad that Tom was passing better now, too. That's, what did we learn, though? We watched that. We watched the one game. Mm -hmm. Nobody plays defense over the middle. No, not one human played defense over the middle at all. There's an incredible amount of green uh, in the first 15 yards, right smack dab in the middle. So if you're running drag routes, anything crossing, any post or corner that goes against the middle, unbelievable. You're going to be open 15 yards. So that might be something to key in on. And again, just like Cody just said, you don't have to use that information, but. But you're going to have to pay us. But next week, if I see 90% <laughs> of the plays going over the middle, <laughs> I know where you got it. One of your 10 fans is giving you advice. You guys are worried about players selling out your plays. You should be worried about fans making note of how poor defenses are and how to beat them. Maybe note that as well. There are armchair coaches. That actually could probably do something in this league. <laughs> Um, insane game by Dormady. Yeah. Um, tell the Guardians to fuck off forever accusing me of tipping plays again. Holy shit, man. Yeah, he's, well, he flexed on him. I mean, he did. And you know what? It's got to be tough. Getting, getting, uh, benched, starting again, and then ultimately getting replaced by Normandy. Yeah. It's also got to be tough to play at that level when you got preemptively kicked off a team before an investigation was concluded. Yeah. Investigation found that there was no evidence that you your were team was accusing you of what you did. Then you come back and then you play like that. That's pretty impressive. And you beat the best team in the league. So that's a lot of impressive I mean, stuff. He, 27 for 34, 328. No interceptions, three touchdowns. That's a great game. That's an insane game. Very good. Uh, I I like I like this game. 
I wish that the the Guardians seem to be in some games and then really just get blown out sometimes. So maybe maybe Dormady is the answer. Is now. the answer. Mm. Maybe they won't be totally garbage the rest of the year. They'll see. Their playoff hopes are done, though. Well, yeah. They are statistically eliminated. Already in that basement. That's probably not even true. Houston only has four wins and they leave the division. <laughs> if they win out and go four and six and everyone else loses out in their division or only gets one more. Houston can't win anymore, but a couple, like, San Antonio could win. I don't know. I bet they're not statistically eliminated, but they're not going to play. And, and looking at just base level stats, Arlington might be sneaky bad. They are. <laughs> they might not be as good as I thought they were. No, I think they're huh. not. All right, well... Amazing game for the Guardians. Um, what did we learn, though? The defenders are who we wish they have been. The They're whole just season. humans. Yeah. They breathe the same air as me. I could get out there and get them one game. Who knows? Uh, also, uh, DC's kicker does not have the leg for a 63-yard field goal. Confirmed. Confirmed. I don't know if there was a lot of question about that, but um, it landed short. <laughs> Politely speaking, it was short. <laughs> yeah, but okay, let's think about this a little bit. When does the NFL ever shove you out there to kick a 63-yard field goal when Russell Wilson is your quarterback? <laughs> yeah, that's... But I hardly ever see anything past 60 yards be attempted. Oh. Justin Tucker, Greg Zerline, a few cannon legs. Sure, those are older guys, though. Mc, McManus can do it. All right. Janikowski. Old guy, old guy. The big J. The iron boot. What about Fat Randy? No. I like Probably. I bet you Fat Randy could, though. But it's the offseason, so I think he's just Randy now. Yeah, okay. All right. Shout out to Randy Bullock. We got away from Bulkin season. <laughs> he's, he's bulking right now. AKA the NFL season in... Cold weather. <laughs> AKA his entire life. Damn. <laughs> I, I love you, Randy. I'm fat too, man. <laughs> fat Randy, fat Andy, fat Sean. <laughs> fat Sean, dude. Fat doctor. Fat Tuesday? Fat. Yes, fat every day. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I love a defender's loss. That's just, I think, the bottom line. I agree. You want you want to scorch earth them or what? Yes, the DC defending a fraud allegation of not being the best team in the league. Okay, thirty six, and the Orlando Basement Guardians, thirty seven. From handshakes to the Guardians, awesome, awesome. This might be their only loss though, which would suck. Their only win. I mean, the defense oh, only lost. Could be both. Yeah, right. Probably, exactly. probably will be. Exactly. Um, here's a game that I wish went differently. But also ties into what was your favorite April Fool's joke. Yes, this was a good April Fool's joke. I had a very hearty chuckle. You did not find it so funny. No, and I'll explain after. But the St. Louis Battlehawks, Houston Roughnecks, you want to just do the, do, do the April Fool's thing. Yes, so, if you guys are familiar with NFL St. Louis to Los Angeles relation, uh, the St. Louis Battlehawks posted on their Twitter a, a announcement on April Fool's saying that the team was acquired by somebody and was moving to Los Angeles. And I laughed very hard, and I immediately sent it to my good friend over here who uh, is a Rams fan. I'm king of St. Louis. <laughs> I... I'd like to see a dispute. You know, I was. Go on. <laughs> As you can see, I'm he's very, very upset about that so April Fool's mad, joke. Dude. It was a funny joke. It was not. Oh, my God. Imagine how many people fell for it, though. 
Probably all of them because they're dumb as wrong. Yes, exactly. The XFL fans might be a notch below oh. typical NFL fan, and that's not good. Yeah, it's like I, I, when you send that to me. So I'd seen it like just a little before you sent it to me. You sent it to me. I was like, this sucked. And let me explain why. It's so good. All right. I spent the darkest years watching the the Rams play in Edward Jones Dome. And the best thing that Dome ever did was blow out Reggie Bush's knee. Mm. We I had I had the Sunday ticket. God bless. I would watch every game every Sunday. We would be three and thirteen, two and fourteen. We would start the season 0 and 9. And we'd be like, well, who wants to play quarterback? Oh, man, we're bad. But you know what we had? We had Steven Jackson, who gave it his all. It was, we had some good years with him. We once almost made the playoffs. But Seattle made it that year at 7 and 9. And then that was the whole Beast Quake incident. Woo. It, it got so bad. And, and fuck you, St. Louis. You quit going to the games. I didn't quit watching on TV, but you blacked out direct TV. I could not watch some games because you guys didn't buy enough fucking tickets. Mm. And when I, my fucking dumb brain was like, mm, I'm going to look up the ticket prices. They were trying to get you in the game for free. You're the worst fan base for football. I, oh, I remember the greatest show on turf. We were awesome. Yeah. Me too. Do you remember the years after that? I do. Fuck you guys. <laughs> I hope the Battle Hawks leave. <laughs> you deserve. <laughs> Last night you did not have that much vitriol and hate about I know, that like, joke. So I'm you, sorry that I brought if, up. This, if you sit topic. on it long enough, there's enough there that it's like. They thought they were being so funny. Be like, oh, we wouldn't fuck you guys over. The city of St. Louis <laughs> fucked themselves over. Go to the game. You'd have had another Super Bowl, but now it's mine. Bubbling up. It's all you. mine. You guys get no credit for it. Sorry, I didn't realize it was that bad. My, my mistake. My it's apology. like the fucking dipshit Bennett stealing the Sonics from me. Oh, there you go. Now that touches my heart. That's a special. I'd like to... DP that guy's house. Let's do it. With used toilet paper. Yeah, of course. Let's get into the game. All right. what, how do you feel about this one? Uh, I didn't see the post game, but I assume AJ McCarron cried, cried again. Yes. A classic crying um, moment for AJ. I did learn. Talked a lot of shit about um, Brandon Silvers. Yes. He's actually hurt. That's why he's not playing. Oh, <laughs> so I thought he got benched too. Hand up. He's he's hurt. Was it from last game? It must have been I, yeah. last game. Because so, I remember him coming out. Mm -hmm. Okay. He still has that face that looks confused all the time. Yeah. So I don't know what is actually hurt on him, but he was in full uh, fan clothes. It, he can't close his mouth. No. He, he's got a. Uh, but and, and and his face is long. Yeah. And he just is like, uh. <laughs> yeah, that's, I did it. <laughs> you should go out there and play quarterback for him. Uh, to be blunt, my shoulders kind of hurt. But yeah, I could. I, I saw this thing the other day. This this ties in. Okay. I saw this thing the other day that was like, if you had an entire game playing quarterback in the NFL, full rush, full blocking, everything like a real game. Mm hmm. Could you complete a pass? I said, that's the dumbest shit I ever heard. And some guy was like, oh, I could probably throw for 100 yards. And I was like, why not? You throw one screen pass that goes for 70, who cares? The pass that went for 70. And then some NFL guy was like, no regular human could make a pass in the NFL. That's bullshit. Mm. That's, you don't want to toot your own horn too hard, but like, if I suited up, I could complete passes in the XFL. Okay. <laughs> I got I got the arm for it. I got the vision for it. 
Okay. And I'll have you know, <laughs> I have never played a single down of competitive football in my life. That is that is true. But I could throw that ball over the mountain. Also, you no one on earth should have played football for our school. Uncle Rico. So the roughnecks look terrible. That what's going on? Is it a coaching issue? Can you tell? It's not not coaching. I mean, it's not Wade Phillips. It's the offensive coordinator kid. Mm. He and it's a quarterback problem. Um, there are a few plays McDonald had that just were not right. They were just they tried to do like the RPO. Mm -hmm. And he he chose the P every time and it was never correct. Um their defense gets put in a lot of bad spots because their offense doesn't do shit. And then Wade Phillips just goes, what the hell is going on? So they're slipping bad. Okay. Lost three in a row. Mm -hmm. I don't see them falling much further, but like they've proven they don't really beat good teams. Or maybe the upper third of teams. So they're probably a very middling team is what my mm -hmm. conclusion would be at this point. I like their running back the most. Uh, Max Borgie? Yep. Okay. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. Did you, um, CMC tweeted out <clears throat> like basically the Spider-Man meme. <laughs> it was like, we're the same person. It's seriously <laughs> though. They look exactly the same. It's kind of wild. They are. But uh, Borgie the Corgi, he's very small, and he gets into that end zone very consistently. So I yeah. like him. They should do a All-Star game, a Pro Bowl, if you will, for the XFL. But, like, make it a real game so they really hit each other. Mm. Steal the NFL Pro Bowl. And that's when we can implement the bounty gate we've been waiting for. Yeah, and I'm certain that Dr. Heat has something planned. Beautiful. People are turning on him now. Why not? Should have seen it. People turned on him quickly. Mm. So, I don't know. Battle Hawks are probably top three team. That makes sense to me. Sure. Yeah, I, I just like that. AJ McCarron is probably about as good as I thought he would be in this. I just wish he would stop crying. He just loves the game. He just loves the game. For the love of the game. He wants his kids to see him play. How unfortunate for them. We'll always have Musburger. God bless. Wow. So, St. Louis Battlehawks. Five and two, Sea Dragons five and two, DC Defenders six and one. That is the North. That's a good stack. Kings of the North. Next week should be good if the Dragons can win. Who are they playing next week? Do you know? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. They're going to play the Defenders. Ooh, major implications. Yes. Oh, man. And look, next week, for no reason, they played two games on Saturday and two games on Sunday. That's wild. Do you think they were drunk when they were setting the schedule? I don't know. I don't know if they were forced to compete around, like, every event known to man. Probably. I mean, obviously, they don't take precedent over anything. But when you're getting beat out by, like, Wyoming's national rodeo event. <laughs> Just say, hey, we'll put three games on one day then. Hmm. I don't know. So next week is actually a pretty good viewing schedule. I'll be able to um, watch every second of the action if I choose to. Oh, yeah. But I will be doing a lot of Goldberg investigating. So hard to say. Where in the world? The XFL might be fading. No, no. So. Okay. Every week they say, look at our TV numbers, and people go, oh, no, no, there should be more. No one goes to the games either. Unless you're in D.C. 
They I'm, love that I'm team. tired of these beer snakes, too, and I'm tired of the defenders throwing lemons on the field. <laughs> I love it. It's all good. And and I will right. say today, the broadcast, guys, the game was not very good at the end. They, they lost their minds. <laughs> there was a guy front row of the end zone, and he had his leg propped up on the barrier. Mm-hmm. Except for he didn't have a leg. Mm. Oh, um, so it was a stump? Yeah. Ah. And he was waving his prosthetic in the air. <laughs> and they were losing their minds. I love that. And he's like, oh, got the big leg and the little leg. And the other broadcast guy goes, does our kicker have the little leg? That's fine. So. That's good. Um, a couple of prosthetic legs were being waved around. So that's very cool. That is cool. I bet those guys would kick ass on the field. Only in the XFL. Only in the XFL. And he would not stop showing them either. It was so funny. <laughs> That's awesome. So, shouts out. Very cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, St. Louis Cryolots, 24. And the Houston Soft Dicks, 15. <laughs> Jeez. All right. That's good. Fine. The Houston Puddle of Muds. Beautiful. The Houston uh, waiting around for another win. Oh, nice. Sometimes you just got to fire off a few to see which one really. Yeah, third time's a charm. Sticks. I think the soft dicks landed. That was okay. Didn't do anything, but it landed. Sure. (laughs) And that's our XFL talk. Now we're going to spend five minutes on the NBA because the season is almost over. It's like four or five game left per team. And uh, I want to start the bad juju on the Celtics right now. Okay. They will not win. They will probably make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. And then Jason Tatum will disappear completely. And I will be vindicated for the second year in a row. As is custom for that man. Yes. Well, he had a bad run, and then he just took like two days off. Big news, the most important games of LeBron's career, as said so by himself, mm-hmm. um, he has gotten the Lakers back over 500, and they will play in the play-in playoffs. Mm-hmm. Is, that what, is that what we're calling those? Play-in. The yeah. play-in. Mm-hmm. They still could just make the top six which would be surprising. Mm -hmm. Um, And then another guy that I need to just like drag uh, is Dylan Brooks. I don't know what his problem is. I don't know who he thinks he is. He got cocky out of nowhere. Um, He reminds me of Leandro Barbosa. Oh, In like the worst ways. Ah, I hated Barbosa. <laughs> he, he was a scrappy defender and like maybe the best shit talker in the NBA. Uh, I think what Brooks lacks is the ability to um, shit talk and not get in a straight up fist fight. Mm-hmm. And he also is kind of a crybaby. Um, that's what Barbosa never did. He never pretended like what he was doing wasn't annoying. So. Either lean into it or don't. Um, but then he got kind of body bagged by Westbrook. So Westbrook still had some in the tank. Shouts out to that. Very surprising, honestly. I don't think so. He's he's an insanely good player. I mean, after how bad he's played the past couple of seasons, though, how inconsistent. Sure. I'm not going to say bad. Sure. Inconsistent. He cannot. He, he got the yips for mm-hmm. shooting. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. But yes, you're right. Maybe, maybe you, you you're definitely more right than I am on that. I overvalue him because I think people just dump on him so much and forget what he was. But he has played very bad. He's he's back a little. Yeah, no, I, I mean, yeah, been playing lights out since he got traded to LA. So from LA, from from LA, yeah. So you know, I mean, it's it's good stuff. Um. The Brooklyn Nets are the worst team in basketball. 
Oh. And they're going to make the playoffs. So sure. they're a fraud six seed. Yeah. They shut down. Um, what's his nuts? Sixers guy. Oh. The 6'11 point guard. Oh, ben Simmons. Yeah, there it is. Could well, not, but I could, <laughs> talk about the yips. <laughs> God, <laughs> dude. No one has worked less for $20 million than him. One of the biggest money sinks in the NBA in the past, you know, five years, three Easy. years, three years. I was going to say fucking decade. Well, you've not been in the league that long. Well, I guess what I'm saying is I have not oh, seen you're saying comparatively, yes. such a skid from, oh, my God, this guy is the future of point guards to get him off my team. Yeah, we don't even want him to play. Yeah, so he'll get another contract after this one because some team will think we can fix that. Sure. Can't. I saw a funny thing the other day. This is this is shouts out to Kyler. Um, Markel Fultz has more thirty point games this year, this season than in every previous season of his career. So, hell yeah, they fixed his shoulder. He can shoot again. Yes, shout out. I don't know what that says about modern medicine taking six years to figure out that he was scared to shoot, but cool, I guess. Somehow he didn't get, like, drug out of the NBA. He's a great player. He is just a mental basket of mystery. Yeah, I don't know how you fix Ben Simmons. <clears throat> you don't. You might as well just scrap it. Yep, I agree. Um, Luca wants to quit basketball? Yeah, the Maverick skit has been insane and fun. I love it. To watch. Uh, cause you know, the big talk is as soon as Kyrie came on that, oh my God, this team is going to shoot up to the top four spot at least. Yeah. They're not going to make the playoffs. I uh, I don't really know how to call it. There's been a lot of debate. So the top four people to blame are Luca, Kyrie, Mark Cuban, or yep. Jason Kidd. I want to blame Jason Kidd. I don't think he's ever been a good coach. He is not. No, he is the... great player. He's the, he's the Steve Nash of the Western Yeah, Conference. <laughs> all these players that we love watching growing up. Terrible coach. Good coach. <laughs> I don't understand that too much. It's kind of crazy. He's like, could we just we just try to get more triple doubles out there? And they're like, what? He's like, just pass, rebound, and score. That's all we need to do. I'm like, we're, we're trying. He goes, well, just, just keep doing it. Yeah, just do better. What I've seen from Jason Kidd in terms of stuff that he's done maybe out in the public eye is he does kind of ride his players really hard. He does kind of say, like, yeah, it's Luca's fault. He needed to be smarter. Yeah. Like, he's not really saying all the time, oh, it's a team thing. Whatever. He's kind of like, no. But usually, these guys suck. <laughs> usually if you're not, like, a player's coach, um, your team is good. Uh, if your team's bad and you're not a player's coach, they're going to ask for you to be fired. Yeah. So I don't know what to make of his poor decision making. Uh, let's just take a look one more time. I still like the Kings. I had them picked a long time ago as potential NBA champs. Um, they're, I think, giving up more points per game than when I said that. So, uh oh, but they love letting people score. It's okay when you score a lot. Yeah. They, they, 120 a game. Yikes. Good for them. Uh, I think that's basketball wrap-up. Uh, yeah. That was fun. Kings are good. Nuggets are good. Celtics, you're not so high on, but I think they got what it takes this year. Yeah. Never. Fair enough. Now let's transition into basketball that is ending. Preview of the NCAA Men's Championship. Ooh. Hey, pull it together. I, pull it together. It's late out here. On the West Coast. 8.30 at night. We're an old man. San Diego State and UConn. Who would have thunk? Not me. <laughs> very fun. Four and five seed. Don't see that very often. No. No. 
my gut reaction to this is UConn by 20. Yep, we were talking about that earlier. You are definitely thinking UConn's going to blow them out. I think it's going to be close until towards the end. Uh-huh. But I would say a UConn win by 10 seems reasonable. What do you think the spread is? Seven and a half? Okay. Yeah, I would say I would say a 10-point win, but it's going to be really close until the last five, six months. All right. I think SDSU has what it takes to be here. I think they really impress in the tourney. They play very good defense. Yeah. Like, tough defense. I just think UConn has way too many, like, athletes, scores. Yeah. And they also play, like, very good defense. I think here's Kyler's favorite stat. They're top 20 in, like, adjusted defense. I don't know what that means. Just guess. Don't ask Just me. Define it right now. Adjusted defense? Yeah. Uh, you adjust the team's defense based on... Who they played? Who they're playing? It's just defense. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, someone made a lucky shot, and you're like, well, that doesn't count. It seems like a stat that ESPN made up. Yeah, but for the last, like, however many handful of years, the you, teams in the top 20 adjusted defenses have always won the national championship. I don't know what it means. But you have to pick one of those teams now. It's a weird stat that seems to be, like, quasi-effective. Um, but this is the best San Diego State has ever done in their program's history. This would be huge for them. It'll be huge for UConn if they win because then they get to say, no, we are the best basketball program in the last 20 years. And it won't even be close. I think they'll have won like five, four. Four sounds. Four might be right. Closer to me. But they'll have more than Duke, North Carolina, Kentucky. One fun thing that I've been seeing and watching, you know, quick little videos on is the last time that SDSU and UConn met. Um, in the tournament was uh, Kawhi Leonard and uh, Kembe Walker. No, really? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a... They're the same age? Yeah. So it's kind of a nice little... Wow. Little uh, reunion of these teams who not so too long ago were, were playing and, and scrapping it out. So That is cool. Nice stat. Work out there. That was an ESPN stat. <laughs> Um, you want to you want to take a winner because I'm taking UConn. I think yeah, you're, I think no, you're I think you're with me on that. You just we think the outcome will be different. I'm taking UConn. What SDSU has is that nobody's expecting them to win. They're on a nine game win streak, yeah. so they have a lot of heat behind them. Um, they like you said, they play really good defense. They seem very fundamentally sound. UConn uh, is just a scoring machine, knows how to take down really good opponents, uh, but UConn's got If you just look at their tournament runs, UConn won by 24, 15, 23, 28, what is that, 16, 7, 13? Yeah. 13. And San Diego has won by 6, 17, 7, 1, and 1. Yeah. However... UConn has also only given up like 50 points three times this year. 50, 50, 50, 70. I mean, their defenses look pretty comparable. They actually look like a pretty good matchup just from points scored and points given up throughout their tournament run. It'll be fun. I'm excited for it. I think I'm more excited for this one than I have been in several years. Hmm. I don't know why. Well, I think it started getting really exciting when all these one and two seeds started dropping out. I think that was kind of like, oh, my God, nobody predicted all this. I saw a thing that was like, who suffered the most devastating loss of the tournament? And if you say anyone but Purdue, you're a liar. Hmm. Not even Virginia to Furman. It is Purdue just getting whooped. You're ta- yeah, you're talking about the hype and then the subsequent yeah. fall from grace. Yeah, I knew they were bad, though. I That is on record. I knew they were bad. Sure, sure. Um, thought Alabama was good, though. That kid fucked me. 
Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> what I thought you were going to say is who suffered the most devastating loss, Alabama, just because of how much hype was around that team yeah. and also all the extracurricular stuff that was going on behind the scenes. You, There's one of two directions you go. Your best players start fucking up really bad, and then you start sucking. But their players fucked up really bad, and they were continuing to win and win. You have to take it all the way at that point. You do. Because now it's just going to be like, oh, you shouldn't have let that kid play because it didn't matter anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -oh. Historically bad. But then I guess flip that around. If they won, it would have been like, oh, you shouldn't have let him play. Yeah, but then at least you go, well, talk to my trophy. I'm going to go do something else. Perfect. Huskies by a million. Okay. Huskies by 10. Now let's cover the hottest topic of the day. I don't know. That's probably not true, but it is funny to me. Uh, the Women's National Championship, LSU won, and it was not even close. It was not competitive. Yeah. It was, they scored 102 points. Oh. That's a ridiculous number. That's crazy. To hook triple digits. In a women's championship game? It's not explainable to me, man. No one played defense in this game because Iowa also scored 85. But at one point, Iowa was down by like 20-plus. They were down 20-plus most of the game, it felt like. Mm -hmm. um, so what is the biggest takeaway from this? I'll tell you. Shit talking. Is it good for the game? Obviously, it is. That's dumb. You should be allowed to do whatever you want. Now, there are limits, and you will have to suffer backlash when you kind of look like a poor sport, in my mind. I think that's what it came down to, which is why I didn't, it left a bad taste in my mouth. She kind of looked like a poor sport. You're talking about the LSU yeah. player? Sure. Reese. Yeah. Kind of. Now, obviously, um, Clark got, like, all the attention throughout the thing, getting huge 30, 40-point triple-doubles, being generally touted as the best player here. Um, yeah, you guys beat him. You don't have to, like, walk around following her doing whatever. Now, did she do the John Cena, you can't see me first? Yes. Did she do it to an opposing person? It's an interesting take uh, for LSU to say that Caitlin Clark's shit talking in the previous game against Southern Carolina, South Carolina, motivated them like that. I think that's great, though. I mean, if you're going to take somebody else's game, to, like really light a fire under you, I mean, that's cool. But it oh, was. Yeah, I mean, that's the psycho in that. Right. I, I, I agree completely with that. If you have beef for any reason. Roll the dice. Everything's arbitrary. Fight anyone for any reason. So I think I think what it came down to, though, maybe is that there was kind of an excessive um, rubbing it in their face towards the end of the game. It was weird. Um, I mean, she, like, followed her around, kept pointing at her finger. Yeah. Kept doing the, you can't see me. Which is fine. Again, I'm... I, I feel like I have to reiterate, it talk is cool, but when she is not paying attention to you and you're like 15 feet away, it's weird. If you want to shit talk, get right in their face and do it. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to be like kind of petty and pedantic about it, run to your locker room and yell, you suck as you're leaving the court. Like, who cares, man? Yeah, I don't know. Um, Overall, though, I think LSU was just the better team. Oh, it wasn't even close. So, regardless, the team that won was supposed to win. Mm -hmm. um, Iowa had a great run and, and was really impressive to see. Uh, Caitlin Clark deserved to talk her shit, I think. Sure. Uh, but at the end of the day, you might want to do a little bit more classy towards the end. But I, I like shit talking, so I, I think it was fun. Yeah, and I think for everything I've seen, this is what kind of – what kind of fired me up about this a little bit was people started to make this into something it was not. 
Sure. You yeah, can yeah. say that what she was doing was not very cool, even if the game before a similar situation happened, but not the same. There, you have to distinguish the differences. And if you're gonna, if you're gonna like kind of needle somebody and say you didn't get the thing you wanted most, but I did. Why? You've already won. That's weird. I, I think I would be feeling the same way uh, if Caitlin Clark was in that girl's face doing John Cena over and over. Oh, I would have said, what is wrong with this lady? Yeah, like, you already talked your shit. Like, you don't need to keep doing that. Like, winning should be all the satisfaction you need at that point. Sure. If you want to if you want to make a play in the middle of the game and then just right in her face... Oh, that's electric. <laughs> that's fucking electric. Yeah. You want to wait till there's no time left on the clock and stand 15 feet away and just like yell at her? Weird. Sure. Well, yeah. So somebody um, referenced Michael Jordan's quote. It was from the the Last Dance uh, documentary. And, and he's in the locker room oh, with a yeah. cigar <laughs> and a baseball bat. And he's like, it's easy when you're up big to talk shit yeah like let's see if they do it from the start the real ogs the ones that like know that they're good are when it's tied and you're talking shit yeah. or when you're only up by a little bit or only down by a little bit and you're still talking shit yeah. like that's when it really sets you apart as like i i can talk all this but i can also back it up yeah that's a great point being up 20 with 30 seconds left and going ha you suck it's like, yeah right got him i guess it would also be interesting too if, if LSU and Iowa had like a beef, like in the regular sure. season. Yeah, if this was a, a historic whatever, then all bets are off then. Right. Or if Iowa's team, or maybe specifically K Caitlin Clark, was calling out LSU and being like, we're going to fucking stomp you. Yes. Then I could see being sure. up by 20 and still telling people oh, to fuck you, off. Oh, at that point, it's your victory parade on their courses. Yeah. Yeah. But I, that wasn't the case. So. That's out to LSU, but second beef. The coach. Yes. <laughs> hey, so I don't know any game I've ever seen where the coach is allowed with no warning to stand five feet onto the court and also hit a, inadvertently, hit a referee <laughs> and not get a warning, not even get a T, not even get a stern talking to. Get on that bench. They were playing six defenders at some point, which was you, very funny. You could wear all the fancy suits you want, put feathers on it, put fucking cheetah print on it. I don't give a shit. I, I believe today was tiger stripes. Yeah, you need to get your ass <laughs> on the sideline and not run into referees because then you are impeding them in doing their job. But also their coach is the GOAT. The LSU? Yes. She's the GOAT? Oh, <laughs> Well, she also doesn't care about her old players, so. You tell me that story of them asking her for comment on Reiner getting arrested, and she just goes, no, nope. I'm good. No, nope. don't need it. <laughs> Thinking on it, though, since you and I just chatted about that, um, it might have something to do with the fact that she was caught with weed oil. Of so. Course. To like not tie her into being no, I understand allowing you. players to smoke weed. She like well, was like, I'm not going to say anything. Maybe, but there's a difference between being an adult in the WNBA and being a college kid under her purview. Yeah, you know, right. The standards are the standard, but she's not under their standards anymore. So you could say, I hope the idea, the part where she just isn't like, I hope she gets back. Right. It's so funny. It's like, no, I'm good. I don't want don't anything want to, to do like this. I'm no, good. I'm all right. Yeah, that's bad. So shout out to Mulkey, but you got to figure it out. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. I'm not commenting on that. Okay. We won't. We won't comment on it. That's unbelievable. The mothership dropped a nice deuce on us. Oh, that's out. unbelievable. <laughs> okay, we'll wrap it up. <laughs> Welcome. Before you go to I here. know that's that's crazy. Okay. Welcome to uh the first weekend of baseball. Opening weekend. Opening weekend, baby. Woo! 
Go sports. Go Mariners. Yeah. How did how did your guys' teams do? Ours look like hell. Wasn't so fun. Hey. Opening night was fun. Oh, so fun. Luis Castillo, so good. Robbie Ray, a giant bitch. That dookie. Hurt himself, allegedly. I think he made it up. He looked fine out there. He just looked like garbage. Some flexor bullshit. He was seeing ghosts. Yeah. Fastballs. That's all he can throw. He's garbage. Uh, but I thought opening weekend of baseball is very fun as a whole. Uh, I ate too many hot dogs. <laughs> Tell the crew what you <laughs> ate <laughs> collectively. So day one, I did nine hot dogs for the game. And nine brewskis, baby. Mm -hmm. uh, day two, I tried to eat nine more hot dogs, and I only got seven. And then I thought I was going to die. And then I just, on accident, had a couple more as a snack the next day. So um, I had I had about 18 hot dogs this weekend. And um, it's basically my fault the Mariners didn't win. Yep, 100%. I think I have to own that. I didn't eat enough hot dogs. <laughs> you said, and I quote, I'll eat nine hot dogs until we lose. And tell the Mariners And then lose. I couldn't eat nine hot dogs. No. And no one was helping me. <laughs> you had so many of us eating hot dogs. No one was helping me. I was on an island by myself. <laughs> we were all eating hot dogs in solidarity for our friend. Who was I was eat sweating nightmares. for hours. Me for nightmares. hours. Okay, so... Traditionally, it still stands. I'm 2-0 on opening day, crushing Good. the dogs and the beers. We hope so. Um, I I don't know. I had a great weekend with baseball. It's fun seeing it back. I like seeing all the baseball highlights already. Uh, um, that Angels guy in right field caught the ball without looking. That was crazy. Um Rendon tried to fight a fan in the very first game of the season. He didn't give a fuck. Fight him. I kind of like that, dude, to be honest. But I don't think you should do that as a professional. But I'm here for it, to be fair. Makes um, for a good story, though. Now, if he had grabbed me and took a swing, am I allowed to swing back? Yes. Okay. 100%. Yeah, if anybody breaks okay. that, that clear, nope. distinctive barrier... Yeah, of no con. I didn't player contact going to fan or fan going to player. You're all bets are off. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna get hit. You have to. I'm just making sure. Um, that guy proposed to his girlfriend and got speared by security. <laughs> that was very funny. That, that was, was funny. all time. Uh, weird thing to do. Like, if if you have a connection and you both love going to baseball games, he's never allowed back there. So. <laughs> yeah oh well, man good point i hope she finds someone else to go to the games with maybe she'll meet a nice player good point i wonder if like so obviously they didn't tell anybody he just ran out and went and did it obviously yeah so but i wonder what they were thinking they're like oh my god he's planting a bomb yeah <laughs> this guy's getting very suspicious <laughs> i'm gonna be a fucking hero <laughs> it's just some guy with a ring <laughs> He hit him at full speed. He's dude. got a bomb. <laughs> oh, that was cool. I like that. Um, turns out there's not really much punishment for getting on the field. Besides, he might have some broken ribs. No, no, yeah. Physically, there's no guarantee for your own <laughs> safety. But I think what was I kind of looked into this. I think the worst that can happen to you is the stadium can fine you up to a maximum of $500. Oh. And you're banned from the stadium for life. Which, again, I don't know how they're tracking that unless these stadiums, kind of like uh, the Knicks stadium, have facial recognition software. So I don't think it's about that. What I think it's about is um, ticket, name on the ticket. Sure. So, so I think... you buy me a ticket, we both go in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, th I'm sure people break it all the time. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure they're also not getting on the field again. <laughs> they, they learn their lesson. Now, the risk you take is causing a scene. Like, streaking, there's a bigger punishment because that's now two crimes. Sure. 
but um, you you go in on a Friday night game, uh, you're going to be in jail for the weekend. That's how that will work. They will have to arraign you on Monday if you get arrested. Because mm. there's a chance they take you off and they're like, oh, you're publicly intoxicated. Sure. So maybe one day I'll try to get kicked out of um, a stadium I don't ever plan on going back to. Yeah. Let's make it an East Coast one. Yeah. Oh, of course. As is tradition. Yeah. Um, Repel down the green monster. Mm. That would be terrifying. Cool. Well, I think it would be pretty fun in the moment, maybe. For you, it might be pretty They're strange. just waiting at the bottom with, like, their beat sticks, their, their <laughs> billy gloves. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be pretty cool. We'll try not to do it here. No, I need to go. I need to go back to the Mariner Stadium. For the rest of my life. Good save. Um, I don't know. Baseball in a nutshell, it's back, baby. Long season ahead. So long. Wish uh, we would have split the series, but hey, that's okay. Make sure to check out our other content on Split and Wood. All baseball all the time. Bang. Um, that's, hey. If you can't beat them, join them. Baseball content is hot. Did you see any <laughs> fun sports related um, sports related April Fools? Yeah, my favorite was actually um, some guy tweeted scary breaking news of the the Chiefs are trading uh, Kelsey to the Rams for two second day picks. Oh. And the comment section was not happy. I was happy. <laughs> Interesting. But jokes on them, we don't even have that many picks, so fuck you. <laughs> Very nice. So that was my favorite. Mm. There were a couple others I saw that were just like, breaking news. This team is sold. It's not really an April Fool's. Um, Snoop Dogg getting traded to, or getting picked up by the Steelers. That's funny. A good one. Uh, well, it wasn't Snoop Dogg, though. It was Calvin. Well, they said Snoop Dogg, though. Oh, well, they said his real name. That was the joke, I thought, was they signed Calvin Brodus. Brodus? And the comment section was like, who's this? One guy called. Oh, him. was that the joke they were trying to I, I thought the joke was just that it, it was Snoop Dogg. Yeah, no, that is also the joke. Okay. But, um, one of the everyone's favorite comment on that one was never heard of him. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. So uh I can't I can't wait for baseball. It's fun. It's here. Wish there was an easier way. All right, this is this is very specific. Pacific Northwest. Root sports. Listen to me. Please. There has got to be a way for your mega mind. Uh, pencil pushers to figure out how to make a streaming service that I can pay you nine dollars a month to watch Root Network. I just there's I can't watch the Mariners on MLB TV because it's blacked out locally. I have to jump through nine thousand hoops that I'm not going to explain to watch a single Mariners game. It is a nightmare, and some of us don't have houses that face the right way for satellite. So a nice little streaming thing would be helpful. Every other TV station has it. I turn on TBS, TNT, ESPN right now. Um, what a first world problem. Uh, <laughs> My not, house doesn't yeah. <laughs> the right direction for sound. The sun and the moon. <laughs> I get it. I get it, though. It is very frustrating that local games are always blacked out. So buying any sort of Sunday ticket or MLB ticket or any yeah. sort of ticket is worthless. Almost all the time. Almost, yeah. Unless you're me and your team isn't local. But Mariners, that's all I care about. Can't watch the can't watch the Trailblazers. I was going to say, are the that's, Blazers yeah. considered local? Yeah, they are. Yeah, Root has an agreement with them, right? Mm -hmm. 
they they do push Trailblazers games, so that's annoying too. So and also subsequently the Jazz, the Jazz, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Route. That is weird. We do get Jazz stuff, and I don't fully understand why that market is small. Maybe you think that's a small market. I think so. Okay, I do too. I think anything Utah is probably. And small. We're not going to compete with any California stuff. No. Yeah, it is frustrating. So some or fuck it, dark horse. Let's make a new sports programming conglomerate. Not let's as in we, but no, I you think, out there. People. I think we can. Oh, this is the we are Cottonwood Media after all. The beginning years of, of us becoming Mega Mind TV execs. Wow. Holy smokes. I thought we were going to be rich, but we're going to be rich, rich. <laughs> Get in now while you still can. Oh, man. Hey, it was fun. It was fun. Any other closing thoughts? Um, Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. Yeah. Happy yeah. spring. Warmer weather. Is it spring now? Or did that little groundhog fuck through us? It is spring now. Okay. I would say. Well, it's definitely spring on the calendar. We get um, high 70s weather next weekend. So that's fun for us. Yeah, for us specifically. Mm -hmm. Shouts out to t-shirts. T-shirts. In the works. Going to be fun. Working on the logo. Not exactly we're close. ready, we're but close. we're getting there. And For all, all four of you out there. <laughs> it, it matters. But also... Um, Quick update on the tournament challenge. Oh, yeah. Um, my bracket didn't do well, but there are um, – you and I are the only ones that lost to the company bracket. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> so we will have a drawing for three people. Well, for everyone that beat the company bracket in the top ten. I guess that's crazy. That's so, not good. Free t-shirt going to one of those lucky individuals very shortly. That's but embarrassing. It's not over yet. We still could have a flip-flop in who wins. That's true. Shout out to Tyler and Katie. I guess Pat. Actually, Pat can't win. Pat, no. Pat's locked in at four. Everyone's locked in. Kyler won. Damn. Oh yeah. What? Shout out to Kyler. Oh fuck there you. Go. All right. So. But he won it all, but that doesn't guarantee him the shirt. <laughs> Member of the company doesn't get a shirt. <laughs> no, I mean, all three of these beat the company bracket. So if I the, the rule saying. was if you beat it, you got put in a drawing. So, I see. So okay. you didn't have to win the whole thing. And I don't want to spend all that money on extra material. We'll figure it out. We never do. Everybody wins. Everybody's happy. All right. We're just going to order 20 t-shirts and everyone that participated gets one. And you have to wear it every single day. Every day. Also, um, this is kind of like a, a plea. Um, uh, let's make a deal. Firm handshakes. Um, we can work out a deal maybe where you provide us a website and we pretend that we're your friend. And we will call you on the phone um, once a week. <laughs> Can I just text somebody? <laughs> I, you, you, call. I will call you once a week and he will text you <laughs> occasionally. <laughs> Every once in a while. Every once in a while. When I'm thinking about you. Um, and you can come to one company event per year. Oh. That's pretty good. All right. Yeah, an official member. Yeah, and we're going to run mm. an event at some point. Oh, yes, we will. Why not? We always do. We always do. Sure. You can tell this is a very legitimate organization. <laughs> this is what startup looks like, people. A friend of a friend is always my friend. And uh, we're good. I think so. Thoughts? Yeah, I love it. Till next time, see ya.